So let's start with this suggestion here. Can you suggest some names for the child and the animals? And wow, does Bing Chat over deliver? And here we are, it's done, wow. When you give Bing Chat some more specific instructions, it really delivers. This one is nice, the bear's having a look at the waterfall, maybe meditating. We've got a little squirrel friend perhaps down here with our child, Alex. There have been a lot of AI programs and features that have been implemented in the recent months, but none more impressive in my opinion than the incorporation of ChatGPT4 into Bing itself. The ability to use ChatGPT alongside search functionality is a complete game changer. And in this video today, I'm gonna to be showing you some prompts and some ways that you can use Bing's chat system in order to really enhance your teaching, but also enhance the learning of your students if you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Mark and I'm a high school math teacher. If you're not new, welcome back to the channel. Let's dive on in. If you go to the website bing.com slash chat, as you can see on the screen here, you'll be faced with this screen. This is the screen saying that you need to sign up to get access to the new Bing chat or the, as they say, AI powered co-pilot for the web. And to do that, all you have to do is click start chatting here and it's gonna ask you to sign on in. Once you sign up and put your name on the wait list, you'll get this screen here saying you're on the wait list and you will receive an email once uh, you've been approved and you can try the new Bing. In my experience, this takes 24 hours, maybe less, and you'll be uh, connected to the Microsoft uh, Bing service and uh, you'll be able to start chatting. Now, once you've been approved to join Bing Chat, there are two ways to get there. You can either just head to uh, the Bing homepage and ask anything like help me with a recipe with uh, spinach or something like that. And you can type it and this is just your normal search results. But if you go up the top here, just underneath the search term and click chat, that's how you can access the Bing that way. Uh, another way you can access the Bing from the homepage or from wherever you are really, is if you just type in here bing.com slash chat and hit enter, it'll bring you straight to this chat page and you don't have to search for anything within Bing. Okay, so this is the main page for Bing Chat and there are three different conversational styles you can use and I'm gonna demonstrate a different prompt for each one of those. So there's a creative style, a balanced style and a precise style and they're basically exactly what you'd imagine. Precise gives you facts, figures and doesn't really mess around too much. Balanced is more conversational and you can use it more of like a personalized tutor sort of thing and creative is exactly what it says, much more creative, less accurate but it's much better at uh, coming up with stuff itself. So the first one I'm going to look at here is the creative style. Now as teachers, uh, we can help our students become better at uh, developing their ideas by using AI to help them. So this works best in my experience if you can get students to have their own ideas and then come to Bing Chat and have it help them develop their ideas are to help them brainstorm that sort of thing. And that's what the creative tab's really useful for. So the prompt here would be an example of a creative writing piece. And I've written here, and this is what you can demonstrate to students. I have a story idea. I want the story to be about a child who goes missing and everyone is worried about them, but they are having a great time exploring and making friends, maybe with animals. The story should be about the importance of having a good time, but being safe and responsible and letting adults and other people know what you're doing. Can you help me brainstorm a plot for this story? And here is Bing's response. So I'll let you pause the video and have a read of that plot outline if you'd like. But essentially it does exactly what we asked it to do. The child sneaks out, has a great adventure, meets some animal friends, but they also realize that they should have been telling their parents where and when they went and that sort of thing. And this is a great place for a student to start, especially a student who's not that creative, but wants to give creating creative writing a try. They've got this plot outline, so they don't really have to overthink and come up with a story themselves, but they can elaborate on these. The best part, in my opinion, about Bing Chat is the ability to respond to what Bing has given you and literally have, as it says up here, a conversation. So as if this was my teacher or my tutor, I could say something like, and there's some options here that's provided, can you help me write the first paragraph? 
Can you suggest some names for the child and the animals? Thank you. That's a great plot outline if the student's happy with that and ready to take that themselves. So let's start with this suggestion here. Can you suggest some names for the child and the animals? And wow, does Bing chat over deliver? The child, Alex, it's a gender neutral name. The squirrel, nutty because it likes nuts. The owl is Luna because it's nocturnal. The fox, foxy because it's clever and cunning. And the bear, grumpy because it's always grumbling. Those are great ideas for a child's story. And in fact, the student as well, if they really like it, can even talk to their teacher about these names and why they chose them. At this point, I do want to reiterate, and I talked about this in my very first video ever about ChatGPT and other AIs, which has a link on the screen if you'd like to go watch that before coming back to this one. But essentially, I talk about in that video how, yes, this can seem like it's doing all the work for the student, but in reality, if the student's using this kind of tool in their uh, in their learning, they're actually doing exactly that. They're learning, right? Like when naming the squirrel, ChatGPT has chosen Nutty because it likes nuts. And that kind of demonstrates to the student, even if they don't realize it, that when you're naming characters in a story, like for example, Luna, uh, you can base it on aspects of that character. Right, so it's giving like learning, even though it's doing a lot of the work for the student, the student's still gonna learn. And at the end of the day, you're better off having a student do this and use AI to really help them than not do it at all. You know exactly about the students I'm talking about. Anyway, without digressing too much further, I'm going to show you how, yeah, you can use these, or what you can do is ask it um, to change really specific things. So I might say, uh, I really like all these names, but I don't like the name of the bear. I'm gonna say, can you name the bear something else? Maybe make it relevant to the fact it's a brown bear. And so this is where the chat aspect of Bing Chat comes in really handy. And the students can kind of use Bing Chat as a personal tutor for them. So for example here, sure, how about Bruno? A name derived from the Germanic word for brown. That is an awesome name for a brown bear. Bruno the brown bear. I really like that and I can just thank the uh, AI here. I think that's really important as well, especially when the AI rises up and takes over the world. Now there's two more things I wanna show here in the creative aspect. The first is that Bing can actually do art design for us. So I'm gonna go here and click this one that says, can you draw me an image of the waterfall scene? And click that. Uh, and here's the waterfall. Now these are clearly beautiful pieces of artwork and I'll open another one in a tab here to make it nice and big. So beautiful artwork here that the student can use as a reference for their story. But I don't really see the child and the bear in this scene. So I might say, uh, redo it, but include a young child and their friend, uh, Bruno the brown bear and see what, Bing Chat can do with that. And here we are, it's done, wow. When you give Bing Chat some more specific instructions, it really delivers. This one here is a great picture. Honestly, they're all really great. Let's open all of them and have a look at each one individually. This one is nice. The bear's having a look at the waterfall, maybe meditating. We've got a little squirrel friend perhaps down here with our child, Alex. Uh, we've got another one here with the bear and Alex having a chat together, of course, as this is AI generated art, keep in mind this has not been uh, found on the internet by the uh, Bing Chat program. It has been created by artificial intelligence. So of course there are some things that look a bit off, but again, this is just inspiration for our story. Uh, another one here with Bruno and Alex playing around. Maybe Bruno's teaching that Alex to count. Uh, and another one here holding a stuffed animal Alex is with the bear on the left. In any case, these are great designs and uh, another way that you can use the creative conversational style of Bing Chat uh, to help you with your creations or help students understand how they can use it with their creations. Now I'd like to head to the more balanced style and show how I recommend you show this to students and what they can do with it. So for the more balanced style, I like to encourage my students to think of this as kind of like their own personal tutor who knows kinda everything. So down here, I'm gonna talk to the Bing chat as if I'm a student, just asking for help with some school. So I've asked my personal tutor here that I have a year 10 biology test coming up and I'm finding it hard to stay focused. Can you recommend some study strategies for me? And it goes ahead and recommends some pretty generic study strategies. 
so I'm gonna go ahead and say, um, how can I stay motivated while studying? That's a really good one because motivation is usually the thing that stops students stru studying. So because motivation is usually the biggest thing that stops students actually studying, not their lack of interest in doing well, uh, I've said to it, how can I stay motivated while studying? And it says, here's some tips that might help you stay motivated while studying. Set specific achievable goals, take breaks and reward yourself, etc., etc." One other thing I'd like to point out is that it also gives the references from where it got these ideas. So if a student looks at these and goes, uh, skillsyouneed.com, oh, that sounds good. I'm gonna click that and it'll open it straight into a new tab and I can read where these in, this information came from. So that's another aspect of Bing Chat as well. You can use it to research. So here I might say, can you help me study biology? Question mark. And boom, straight away, a bunch of really specific biology based resources from Bing Chat and their links. So if I highlight over say Khan Academy, it comes up with the link and here we are straight into the biology library. Now, if I head back, Bing Chat can actually be my own personal tutor more than just providing me with direction. Uh, I can actually say to it here, can you quiz me on year nine biology? It says, sure, I can quiz you on year nine biology. What topic would you like to be quizzed on? Now, I'm not a biology teacher and I would probably fail this quiz, but we can give it a go anyway. There's three recommendations down here. Let's click ecology and see what Bing Chat is going to ask us a question about. This could be very embarrassing for me, especially if I don't know year nine biology. Okay, so this is not what I expected, but it's really nice to see. There are a bunch of quiz uh, pages, which includes questions on ecology and photosynthesis, flashcards on ecology, quizzes, which I love, by the way, if you haven't seen my video on how to use quizzes, I'm gonna put a link on the screen right now. It's a very in-depth tutorial. Uh, I love quizzes, probably my favorite quiz-based application, but I'm more interested in right now having Bing Chat quiz me directly in this chat. So I'm going to say, can you ask me questions, instead of quiz me, ask me questions about year nine ecology that I can practice and see if it'll do it now. I know it definitely does this, so I'm just trying to get it to actually do it. Okay, so it's gonna give me a bunch of questions, I'm assuming 10. Okay, and we can actually answer some of them. Um, I'm gonna say for 10, the world cycle is a system where work is evaporated from the earth and then moves around in the sky and falls as rain or condensation in other areas, only to be evaporated again, completing the cycle. How was that? Genuinely, I'm asking, how was that? <laughs> and it says, that's a great explanation. You're correct. The water cycle is a system where water is evaporated from the earth and moves around in the sky. Okay, so it just repeats my question to me, but I am right. Let's try and make a wrong answer and see what Bing Chat says. So I'm gonna say uh, five, a food web is where birds eat spider webs because they are full of nutrients. <laughs> Uh, let's see what uh, Bing has to say about that answer. <laughs> okay, great answer. So I'm gonna give you time to read it yourself, but essentially Bing chat here is giving me the correct answer of what a food web is, but it also incorporates my answer and points out where I'm wrong and how it could be right. So it's a really good handy tool for students to check their own understanding, essentially be quizzed right here in Bing, or it can use it to find resources itself. Okay, one more way that you can use the balanced mode of conversational style is to get a bit of a back and forth with regards to feedback. Now, both students and teachers can benefit from this. I think students can benefit from it in that they can put in anything that they've written and ask for specific feedback about it. 
and that way they can improve their writing. For example, here I asked, can you please give me feedback on my summary of the Industrial Revolution? I wrote it pretty brief, but would like feedback on it to improve before I submit it, and then I just put it in and pasted it. And you can pause the video again and read what the response from the chat has been. But the parts I particularly like is that it says to improve your summary, you could add more details. It also says you could also mention some of the key inventions that were developed during the time. And it gives two references where the student can go ahead and find more information about those two things to add into their summary. Okay, so I changed it now from the perspective of a teacher and wrote a student of mine wrote this summary. Can you please provide some feedback I can give to the student to improve their response? And specifically I asked, I want them to focus more on how the individual was affected by the revolution. And here is the feedback. So again, pause and read it for yourself if you'd like. But essentially the summary of the industrial revolution is a good start. Um, I can tell them what they've covered. And then to improve, you could focus on more how the individual was affected by the revolution. For example, you could talk about how people's lives were changed by the new inventions. You could also mention how people were forced to work long hours. Children were often worked in these factories, missing out on education and proper childhood. And I can go ahead and say, um, can you elaborate on the effect on children? And then I can get some more specific feedback I can give my student to help them improve their response. And here I have a response from Bing Chat. And more importantly, I've got some references that I can pass on to my student to help them learn where they can write more about these um, things and improve upon the feedback that I've given them. This is going to save you as a teacher heaps of time, particularly where it comes to uh, getting these references that you can pass along to your students. It's gonna save you so much time and effort and energy and it you can help you, I guess, focus on what you do best, which is teaching. And make sure you show your students how to do this themselves. It's gonna mean that they're going to be relying less on you for, uh, I guess, the feedback that is fundamental um, and you can more work with them on specifics uh, of how their response relates to the task itself rather than you having to help them find sources and uh, write it in a basic way. So yeah, it's a very powerful tool. Uh, hope you like this one. Okay, and the last thing I asked Bing here is, if viewers of a video made it to the end and got value from it, do you think they should share, like, and subscribe? Viewers should only share or subscribe if they genuinely enjoyed the video and found it valuable. So guys, if you did find this video valuable, if you made it to this point, I am hoping you did, make sure you like the video. And if you consider subscribing, I make more videos like AI and how they can help teachers, but it can honestly help anyone in any profession if you just change the context. So if you're not a teacher, still consider subscribing if you like this kind of content. Thanks for watching guys. There's a video on the screen here, which I think you'll really like as well. So make sure you head on over to that one and I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.